Good morning, good morning, good morning, SPU family. It's so good to virtually see you. Um, for those who don't remember, my name is Minister Alex. Um, I was gone for a good portion of last quarter out on paternity leave, so I got to spend some time with my, my new baby girl, uh, and I'm so excited to, to be back. Um, specifically for this quarter, as we are going to be going through the book of Exodus. We're titling this, this chapter series, Journey Through Exodus, and each week our speaker will be going through a portion of, or a couple of chapters of, uh, the book of Exodus as we talk about God's liberative efforts uh, as God took the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage and into freedom. So this week we have our very own chaplain, Lisa, kicking us off as she normally does at the beginning of each quarter, talking about chapters one and two. So we are so, so excited to hear her word and we have some songs and we're just excited to be with each other. I'll be virtually, we'll be starting hopefully back in February in person, but for this month, we'll be doing everything virtually. So thank you for, for being patient with us and we are praying for you and praying with you as we are all trying to figure out this life as we are living uh, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so thank you for joining in and please enjoy the rest of the service. Hey, hey man, well this song simply says, my God is big. We serve a big God and we are declaring over all of our frustrations, our problems, our issues with this quarter in our life that we serve a God that is bigger. We serve a God that is better, that is stronger, that is mightier, and is able to do it exceedingly and abundantly above we can ask or think. If you believe that, then help me sing this song. Since my God is big, so strong, so mighty, and my God plans for me, goes beyond my wildest dreams. Say my God, yeah, my God is big, is big so, strong, so strong, so mighty, so mighty. and our God plans for me. My God, yeah, is good. He's so good to me. Say yeah, hey, so good. Yeah, when I think of God's goodness, I say yeah. God's so good. Yeah. Cause my God is, yeah, is good, so big, so mighty, and my God, bless for me, goes beyond my wildest dreams, yeah, say yeah, it's good, so good. Do. 
No problem, it's too complicated for God to solve. There's no problem too big that God can't overcome. There's nothing too complicated for my God. Nothing too sensitive. Nothing too big. Nothing too small and nothing too large. Come on. My God is a good God. Listen, listen. Cause our God is big, so strong, so mighty, and our God plans for us, don't be on the world this thing, yeah. We'll give God a hand of praise. Good morning, you all. My name is Kelsey Roram, and I serve as the associate chaplain here at SPU, part of your campus pastor team in university ministries. And I'm just so uh, grateful that you are joining with us today for worship, whether you're joining us live on Tuesday morning or maybe you're, you're watching at midnight on Friday night. Uh, we are joined together through this medium of technology in this, uh, th these efforts to worship God and to be in community with one another today. So I'm just glad that we are gathering with one another. As a larger gathering on campus, we made the decision to be online for the month of January. And it's not what any of us were hoping for, but it uh, seemed like the right decision for us in this season. And so for the next three weeks, we'll be gathering in the same manner, but then we'll be reevaluating for the remainder of winter quarter. And if you're here with us at the premiere, we hope that you'll make use of the chat function on the side of the screen. Um, say hello, let us know where you're worshiping from today. Um, use it to shout out, you know, our, our, our preacher when we're in the word, um, offer up a word of thanks or praise. Um, use that function as a way to be connected to one another, even when we are separated across the screens. And since we are at the beginning of the quarter, I want to make sure that I mention that there's so many ways, students, for you all to get connected to University Ministries and to be part of what God is doing on our campus and beyond, really, uh, as we grow in faith together and as we build community and serve the community as well. So we want to make sure that you check out our SPU UMIN online page. We'll drop those links in the chat, and they're also in the video description. Um, that's where you can find out all the information about what's going on in you men. Uh, you can also stay connected through following us on Instagram at SPU underscore you men or through reading your email every Monday. It comes right into your inbox. It has an update on everything that's happening in you men that week and we hope that you'll take advantage of that. Uh, in particular, I want to make sure you know that small groups are kicking off this week. Um, so we have general community groups for all folks. We also have specific groups for students who are living in the residence halls led by your SMCs. So be sure to check those out. There are signups for you to sign up uh, directly and get involved th in those spaces. Uh, we know that uh, group is a regular occurrence on Wednesday evenings. It's another opportunity to gather in communal worship. It'll be at 8 p.m. in the Emerson Lobby starting this Wednesday. And in this quarter, they're working with the theme of deconstruction of faith that matters and um, engaging with questions about who God is and why, uh, why we are invited into this life with God and what does that look like on a real tangible level. So that's going to be really uh, just lovely space. And I invite you students to, to join in with the crew on Wednesday evenings. We also want to just call out and make sure you know that next week is an all university chapel and it's our annual celebration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, that we, we take time every year in our chapel services to honor uh, his life and legacy and the theological uh, foundation that he led, uh, led from as he was uh, leading the civil rights movement. And so this year we have the honor of hosting the Reverend Dr. Kelly Brown as our guest preacher. 
Uh, pastor Brown is the senior pastor at Plymouth United Church of Christ here in Seattle, and she is a gifted preacher, a prophetic uh, leader in our community, and we're just grateful that she'll be with us next week. So we hope that you'll make time to join us as well. And so as we enter into worship this morning, um, I just want to offer a brief word of prayer, and then I'll invite us to welcome our speaker, um, our own university chaplain, Reverend Lisa Ishihara. But before Lisa comes, maybe I'll just offer a quick word of prayer. Gracious God, um, we are gathered here together, but separate. And God, there's some grief in that, but also just gratitude. Lord, for this SPU community and for what you are doing in and through us, God, even in painful spaces and broken spaces and in incomplete spaces, God, we know your spirit is here and living and active. And we call upon your spirit to be just uh, even more acutely present with us today. So as we worship, as we listen to your word, may you be glorified this day and always. And may we continue to be refined as your people, uh, trying to live out your gospel. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you join me in welcoming Chaplain Lisa? Good morning, SPU community, and welcome to Winter Quarter Chapels 2022. We didn't expect to be online, but here we are. And so in the middle of that, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate our SPU community and the ways that we've been able to lean in and be present with one another as things are constantly changing. In the midst of all this, I also very much miss being in person. Like some of you, I would love to be in a space all gathered together. And so we wanted to give those of you that have the availability to come and join us after this chapel message in Eaton Breezeway. We'll be meeting at 8.45 a.m. right after this chapel message to partake in communion together. And this is an opportunity for those of us that follow Christ uh, to take a moment to be reminded of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us on the cross, to be reminded that this is what makes us family that this is what gives us life, even when life is hard and challenging. So we hope you'll join us. For those of you that can't join us in person, we also wanted to give you the opportunity to be able to gather together. So we will be meeting on Mondays at 12 p.m. on Zoom for midday prayer. So if that would be an encouragement to you just to be with other people, we invite you to come and join us and pray together. So during the winter quarter, we have often journeyed through a book of the Bible. And this quarter, we're going to be journeying and diving into the book of Exodus. It has themes of waiting, wandering, wanting something, something better. There's also themes of power and empire and oppression, injustice. We'll see God's love for God's people. And we'll see how God has worked in unspoken ways in the scriptures. When I see that, it reminds me that God is at work, even when I don't automatically see it or even feel it at times. Today, we're going to be diving into the book of Exodus, looking particularly at chapters 1 and 2 and getting a little bit into chapter 3. Exodus is the second book of the Bible in the Old Testament, and it picks up where Genesis leaves off. It leaves off with the Israelites, who are the people of God, settling into Egypt. Now, the Israelites, they were now strangers in a land that was not theirs. They were enslaved. They were suffering. They were oppressed for a long period of time. In the book of Exodus, we're also going to get to see God's process of liberating the people of God, of bringing freedom to God's people. So today in our passage, as we dive in, we are going to take a look at how God is at work behind the scenes. Sometimes we don't even know that God is there, we don't realize it, but God really is at work. And so we're going to take a look at that. We're also going to take a moment to look at Moses' life, to see how God was shaping his character. We'll get to see how God shapes our character, even on our messy, very human journeys through life. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's dive into Exodus chapter 1. So at the beginning of this passage in Exodus, it actually spans about 400 years before we get to Moses. Um, that's actually quite a lot when you actually look at how many chapters are in the book of Exodus. Um, 
it'll start with a little bit of history. And so what we see is the naming of the tribes of Israel. So this really tells us who came to Egypt with Jacob. We also see in this passage, actually in verse seven in particular, that the Israelites, they were fertile and prolific and they multiplied and they increased and they filled the land. At the same time, we also see that there's a new king that's rising up in Egypt. And this king, Pharaoh, saw how many Israelites there were. And he wanted to stop their growth because the reality was he didn't want them to band together and rise up against the Egyptians and fight them. So the king needed to come up with a plan. He came up with a plan to oppress them, to force them with harsh labor of mortar and brick, working out in the field. Um, and in the middle of this kind of oppression, what's amazing is that God's people still flourished and thrived and increased and were fruitful and multiplied and filled the land. So it didn't work. So the king of Egypt had to come up with another plan. And so what he did is he said to the Hebrew midwives, when you deliver babies, pay attention. He said, if you see a boy, kill him. But if you see a girl, let her live. Now the midwives, they feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. And so they let the boys live. And the people of God, they continued to multiply and increased in number. This was also Moses' story. It's how he was born and how he survived the king's decree of infanticide. God really provided behind the scenes through the midwives who shrewdly found a way to protect the boys who were being born to Hebrew women. Now, it's kind of amazing to me to pause and to see God's sovereignty and kindness throughout the scriptures. And as we go into this next part, as we see um, the journey of Moses' mother, we're actually going to see how sovereign and how kind and generous God was to Moses' mother. So when Moses was born, it says that she saw how beautiful he was. And so she wanted to protect him. And so she did that for three months. She kept him hidden. But as he, as he grew, she couldn't hide him anymore. So she got a wicker basket and she placed him in it and intentionally put him among the reeds at the bank of the Nile. And this was really strategic because we'll see what happens next. Pharaoh's daughter, well, she bathed in the Nile. And I'm guessing she usually did this with her maidens and there was a kind of a routine that maybe Moses' mom knew about. And so when the basket was placed among the reeds, she saw it. Pharaoh's daughter saw it and she opened it and she saw the child and took pity and said, this must be a Hebrew child. Because of course she knew. She knew what was happening to Hebrew children. Hmm. This was really strategic on Moses' mom's part. The daughter of Pharaoh at that point then decided to send for a Hebrew woman uh, to nurse this baby boy and then she paid the person for that. Now the amazing part about this is that the woman who was chosen, well, the woman was Moses' mother. And so Moses' mother was able to actually provide care and be there to nourish and help grow up her son. And on top of that, she was compensated to do it. To me, that's actually amazing that God worked behind the scenes um, to protect and to care for Moses and to provide for all that he needed. Now, this arrangement of, um, of bringing a Hebrew woman in and then paying her, this was commonly done. And it was a form of adoption in some way. And so what happened was as Moses grew up, his mom eventually brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And it was Pharaoh's daughter who gave him the name Moses. And Moses means, I drew him out of the water. What's fascinating here is Pharaoh's daughter's actions, while well, they actually kind of parallel chapter three in God's actions. So next, uh, in the next time that we get together, you'll be able to take a look at what's happening in chapter three. But what's fascinating to me is if you study um, the verbs that are taking place with Pharaoh's daughter uh, in chapter two, and then you study the verbs that are taking place with God's hand and how God is working in chapter three, um, we see these parallels. So with Pharaoh's daughter, it says she goes down, she hears the baby crying. And then God says in chapter three, God comes down, God sees something and God hears somebody crying. 
And so I think what's fascinating about this with this parallel is that you can see how, um, how God sees and hears and is compassionate. And in the same way, Pharaoh's daughter, she sees, she heard, and she was compassionate and it moved her. And it, it makes me pause and, and think about my life and think about in what ways is God asking me to pay attention, to see, to be in a place to see, to be moved to compassion and to respond. I think life at times just gets so busy and there's so many things that are happening that I don't always pay attention to all of the things that are happening around me. Um, and sometimes they come in these very subtle ways and sometimes they come in very strong ways. And we have the opportunity to see, to hear, and to be compassionate. So I wonder for us, what is the invitation? How is God trying to get your attention? Is there something that God wants you to see, to hear, to respond and be compassionate? Maybe there's a particular person that comes to mind. Maybe there's a particular circumstance that is coming to mind. Maybe there's a group of people Maybe there's something that God is calling you to. So I'd like to invite us to just take the next 30 seconds, uh, just in silent reflection with God, to really ponder and ask, what do you want me to see? What do you want me to hear? And how do you want me to love? To love more deeply. To love your people. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, for some of us, this also just might be a moment of reflection. Um, to consider who can I see and who can I love better. God, you are working behind the scenes in seen and unseen ways. And through this passage, we get to see your hand working towards the things of your kingdom for your people. God, even though your name is not mentioned in some of these passages, we can see how you intentionally worked to bring protection and provision for your people. That God, you made a way through Pharaoh's daughter. You were making a way, even way down the road in the future, just through Moses' birth and through his life. God, I'm reminded of this Hebrew scholar, Sarna. And he said um, that your work, that it's unmistakable and that there's this underlying sense of divine purposefulness. God, I believe that you are purposeful. I believe that you are working behind the scenes in ways that we don't automatically or easily see. So help us to trust that God, you have not forgotten us just like you did not forget the Israelites. That God in these places that might be challenging for us at times, that we experience suffering, oppression, injustices in the world, that God, you are actually working behind the scenes and that you are making a way for your people. So God, continue to do your work in us individually and corporately in the body of Christ here at SPU. God, do your work here. Amen. As we continue through the book of Exodus into chapter two, chapter two um, starts inviting us into Moses's journey. Like we get to see like the real life of Moses. Um, we actually are going to jump into Exodus 2 verses 11 through 15, where we actually get to see that even though Moses was a man of God, Moses also followed his own reactions. He was human. Life was messy. So Exodus 2 11 says, one day after Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and saw their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his kinsfolk. 
He looked this way and that, and seeing no one he killed, uh, no one he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting, and he said to the one who was in the wrong, Why did you strike your fellow Hebrew? He answered, Who made you judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. In this passage, we, we do see that Moses had this moral passion, right? He had this inability to tolerate injustice. He wanted to see righteousness brought about. Brought about. In fact, he tried to act as the law enforcer here. And then later in the passage um, with the Hebrews, he also tried to be a peacemaker, but then they called him out. What I appreciate about this is that <laughs> It shows like the shadow side of who we are as people. It shows that we react and we respond. You know, when I think about Moses in this passage, um, he was just on his journey of growth, right? He was about 40 at this point, and it would be 40 more years uh, before he reached 80 when we really hear a lot of the accounts of how Moses led and worked and really kind of stepped into this calling of God really using Moses uh, to bring freedom to the people of God. And so what that kind of reminds me and what it kind of is an example for me is that we're all in process, right? That we are constantly being molded and shaped, that these hard experiences in our lives, places where maybe we have fallen short, um, or experiences that have been filled with oppression or filled with suffering at times, that these experiences and the ways that we navigate them and respond to them, that they are actually forming and shaping our character. They are forming and transforming our hearts. And that the hope is that we would grow more and more into the likeness and the goodness um, that God desires for us as humans made in God's image. And that the hope is that this would turn us to action, right? Turn us to move towards the, the things of God, move towards God's kingdom purposes. In this passage, as we're reminded that Moses is human, he had a deep conviction for what was right and then he did something about it, and it was messy. Like Moses, we are in complicated, complex, messy circumstances. Now, many of us, we may not have killed somebody physically, but I would guess that many of us, we've committed murder with our mouths. We've hurt people. We've harmed others. We probably always haven't always affirmed the humanity and dignity of others. We're human. There is work that God is doing in us, shaping us, growing us, um, helping us to grow in passion for the things of God, to see justice, to desire the good things and the mercy and the love of God. And so I pray that as we continue through this journey of Exodus, that we will be invited into this longer journey of walking through life, being able to hold, acknowledge, and accept our humanity, our experiences, the things that have shaped us, the things that make us human, um, and know that God is with us in that place, that we are not forgotten, that God is continually working. And so I think that also means that we can also not lose hope, right? That we can hold that God is working behind the scenes in our individual lives and also in our corporate life. And in particular, I am mindful of our corporate life at SPU to believe that God is working behind the scenes in these unseen ways to bring about the ways of God. And so I pray that our community, and that us as individuals, we continue to lean in God, into God in this messy journey of life and that we would continue to see and to hear and to look for the ways that God's love may continue to abound more and more in and through us. That we, just like Pharaoh's daughter, that we, just like God in chapter three, would be moved to compassion, would be moved to love. And so 
as we end our time, I would love to just pray for us um, as we go into this quarter. It is week two. We're holding a lot. Um, and I believe that God is present with us. So would you pray with me? God, I pray that you would help us to know deep in our souls that you are with us, that you are working behind the scenes in very visible ways and also in invisible ways. And so when we are in those moments where it looks like you're not there or we don't feel you or we don't see you, God, help us to be reminded and to trust that you are working for our best for your people that you are working towards your abounding love of God for your people, that you know us, that you see us, that you love us, that you are for us, even in the messiness of our lives. So God, as we continue to go into week two and live into all that you have for us this winter quarter, I pray that you would grow us as a community. I pray that you would remind us that we are not alone. And God, as I all often pray, would you help us to offer ourselves to you and to one another? God, I thank you for this time and community together. May your will be done here. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we look forward to having you join us if you're available right after this chapel message in Eaton Breezeway at 1145 for communion. Everyone else, we hope that you have a blessed week. We look forward to seeing you next week. This song is titled My Testimony by Marvin Sapp, and it's a song about he made it through. And as we just listened to a message about liberation, I pray that this is our testimony, that we made it through, that God pulled us through, that we held on to God as we go through our trials of all the different kinds. So I pray that this, uh, this speaks over your life this, uh, this morning. I'm so glad I made it. I made it through In spite of the storm and rain Heartache and pain I'm still alive declaring I made it through See I did not lose Experience loss at a major cost But I never lost faith in you so if you see me cry, it's just a sign, just a sign that I'm alive. I got some scars while I'm still here. In spite of calamity, God still has a plan for me, and it's working for my good and it's building my testimony so i'm so glad i made it how we sing that that i made it through in spite of the storm and rain heartache and pain i'm still alive declaring i made it That I did not lose Experience loss at a major cost But I never lost faith in you Let's make it communal Say we so glad we made it Yeah That we made it through In spite of the storm and rain Heartache and pain we're still alive, declaring we made it through. That we didn't lose. <laughs> we experienced loss at a major cost. But we never lost faith in you. I'm so glad I made it. So glad I made it. I made it through I made it through I'm so glad I made it 
so glad I made it That I made it through hey, I made it through Help me sing it together Said so glad we made it So glad we made it That we made it through hey, That we made it through Speak for yourself, speak over your life Said I'm so glad I made it I'm so glad I made it And I made it through <laughs> That I made it through I'm so glad I made it I'm so glad I made it That I made it through yeah. That I made it through I'm so glad I made it I'm so glad I made it That I made it through That I made it through That you made it through your situations That you made it through your problems That you made it through this pandemic that you made it through that cancer that touched your family. That you made it through that divorce that touched your family. That you made it through that addiction that touched your family. That you made it through anything that goes on in your life. That you are making it through. If you might, you might be in the middle of your testimony that you'll speak prophetically over your life that you already made it through. That you already solved that problem. That God already handled it. So glad you made it already. I'm so glad you made it already. I'm so glad we made it already. So glad we made it That we made it through mm. Well, thank you, thank you so much for joining in on our first virtual chapel of the, the quarter, second week of the quarter um, and Just listening in, listening in and I really hope that you all stick with us as we dive into the book of Exodus and we just heard an amazing word from Chaplain Lisa. She talked about Moses and really how the Hebrew women stepped in to help out, starting with the midwives and his mother and his sister uh, to save his life and so many other uh, Hebrew boys' lives and um, how they use their agency and how Moses used his agency as well and what that means for us and how we often cause harm but often also show compassion and just what, that, what our response is to that. So. We're going to continue with that next week and, and the week after, so just please keep on joining back with us. And also, please join us this week as we do, uh, partake in communion at 11.45, right in Eaton Breezeway. So come on down and join us um, as we all partake together as much as we can. So, And I want to leave you with a, a scripture here, Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39, that I think is very, very good for us as we're in this broken world. Um, as, and it reads, I'm reading from the King James Version. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, neither height or depth, or any other creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. So please take that as you go, and we hope to see you next week and in Eden Breezeway soon.